Hey guys, it's Truth Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about a coin dealer that had too many coins and we helped him out with that problem. Let's get this video started. So as many of you know, we went to the Grapevine Coin Show this weekend in Dallas and we ended up buying a lot of great coins from a lot of great dealers and we ended up meeting with a lot of great collectors at the show. And so what we ended up doing was we got to sit down with a dealer that just bought a really, really big collection of gold pieces. And so when we sat down with him, he was saying, hey, you know, I got a call last night and I ended up buying the coins this morning and I just took them to the show and I want you guys to take a look at them. So right now we're gonna talk about why this is the most important time for you to be in the room with the coin dealer that bought a $110,000 collection. So there are two things that make a coin business work, turn, create cash flow for you. There's coins that you can sell to your customers and there's cash to be able to buy things for your customers. And so when you're talking about someone that's buying a $110,000 collection, they used to have a coin problem. They didn't have a lot of coins for their customers, they didn't fill up a whole case at the show, and then when someone calls them to sell them a collection, what do they now have? They now have a cash problem. And so when you're at the show and someone brings in that collection and you get to sit down with them, you are essentially solving their problems. You are essentially getting them back to cash. And so it's kind of like a pendulum. So every time you, know, you sell some coins, you are excited to get the cash back, but then you say, what do I do with this cash? Well, I have to go convert it back to coins. And then you're excited to get the coins, but then you're saying, okay, to get to the next deal, I need to move these coins. I need to sell these coins. I need to have customers for these coins. And so the most important time for you to sit down with a dealer or be at a show is when someone buys a fresh collection. And the reason being is because they are in now in a, a state or they're now in a mindset that says, hey, I need to let this stuff go. I need to make some money need to get back to cash so when I have my next opportunity I can end up buying more stuff I can end up getting a better deal elsewhere and so we sat down with that dealer we ended up buying about fifteen sixteen thousand dollars worth of stuff we ended up buying a bunch of stuff from other dealers as well they had a bunch of other coins that they didn't necessarily want and we ended up jumping on for a great deal and we're just passing those deals on to you guys and so when you're somebody that's trying to become a coin dealer you have to get into those rooms you have to get with those people and talk with them and ask them hey what's your week look like what's your month look like any new cool deals that are coming in because whenever that happens that's a great opportunity for you to buy something that you might not see every day so just to add a little bit on to that when you're walking into that deal you are somebody that is cash heavy. You're somebody that's looking out for your customers. And so you're going to meet with that guy that's a little bit coin heavy and he wants to return back to cash. And so you guys end up meeting. You guys end up having a mutual understanding and he gets to get back to his safety blanket. A lot of these dealers want to end up just being in cash all the time. They want to get great coins, but they don't want to have them long. They want to get rid of them and they want to get back to what they think is safe. For us, we like to have great coins all the time so you guys can check them out and enjoy them. And so just an interesting weekend for sure. We ended up buying some better date uh, gold pieces. We ended up buying some really nice type coins from that guy. We also ended up buying a 1884 Morgan dollar that's a proof in 64 cameo. Just a gorgeous coin. And so we're going to spend a few moments today talking to you about all these coins. If you want to check them out, go to acousticcollectibles.com because they're being posted right now as we speak. All right, guys, just wanted to show you a few coins from the buy this weekend. Can't show you everything, but make sure to check out our website, acousticcollectibles.com. This was our last purchase of the Grapevine Coin Show, 1884 Morgan Dollar. Great proof, 64 cameo by NGC. Nice cameo look to the coin. There's just some a little bit of uh, polish or hairlines right out in the fields, which is normal, especially when it's under gem. Going to send this one to CAC, see what they think, and uh, excited to get that one with the sticker possibly. Then we have this 1941D Mercury Dime. It's double die obverse, double die reverse. And the luster is pretty nice. Has a little toning to the coin as well, a little character. And uh, we thought this was a neat one to pick up and try out. Don't do much with varieties, but I think that one's notable enough. Then we're gonna show off a few ancients in this video. So I don't know a whole lot about ancients, but when I see an ancient with a nice strike like this coin, I end up picking it up. And uh, I'm not going to talk too much about these coins just because I don't know too much about them. Love the design. 
uh, just love the, the time period that they're from. And like I said, it would be great to get into these coins later in the year and understand them a little bit more. Then we have this 1937D Buffalo Nickel, graded Min State 67. Exceptional color on the obverse. It was like in an album or something like that. It's graded Min State 67 just because of the strong strike. And uh, if I can get it to focus here, it's just a lovely, lovely high grade coin. And we had to pay a little bit for the color, but that's okay. It does have all the bells and whistles. Then we have this 1917D Standing Liberty Quarter, Great Men's State 65 full head. The luster is really nice on the coin, really flashy. Sometimes they look over dipped or they have some issue to the coin that just makes them lack luster. Kind of strips away the, the wow factor. This one definitely has that wow factor and very excited to be able to share it with you guys. Then we have a coin that you don't see very often. This is an 1804 spike chin half cent and it's graded 515 by PCGS. Kind of hard to pick up in this light, but nice chocolatey color of the coin, CC approved. And when I saw this coin, I know we had to pay strong for it, but just a coin you don't see very often. Love the spike chin on that coin. Then we have everybody's favorite 1909 SVDB, probably the most affordable great out there and uh, you know it had some good detail to it we ended up buying it at the show for a little bit back a bid we're gonna sell for a little bit over bid and when you're buying coins like this you want to make sure that you're the arguably the lowest price in the whole market and so that's going to be that for this coin just because it's good to buy those coins and put them in collectors hands then we have a low mintage 1867 gold dollar great mint state 61 by pcgs you know, when a coin's low mintage like this, like these gold dollars, they often come very proof-like looking, like this coin. And so, definitely has some great eye appeal to the coin, and it is a very low mintage. Don't know the mintage offhand, but I know it's in the, about a few thousand. Here is coins that we love. This is an 1828 cap bus half dollar grade XF40 by PCGS. Just beautiful, original. Still some remaining luster of the coin, CAC approved, and uh, I could buy a hundred of these and I'd be very happy, but they don't come up very often for us. Then we have one of the oldest coins that we purchased all weekend, which is an 1800 Drape Bus Dime. It's great AG3. Another just affordable type coin that most people don't run into. The face is still kind of in there, the, the head shape is in there, and the date. Sometimes when you run to these coins, you don't see the date or you don't see any of the details on the obverse. And for me, that's very important when you're selling a coin. And this one is just a great exception. Then we have an 1853 large set. It's great AU53 by uh, NG, I'm sorry, PCGS. Great chocolatey look to the coin. Nothing about it is subdued or there's no distracting spots. And that's what you like to look for especially on copper. Any with distracting spots can, can be a real problem uh, for getting it to a, cl uh, a customer's hands. Trying to get a little bit more focus on this coin, but just a nice looking coin. Then we have this 1884-0 Morgan Dollar. Great Mint State 64 Deep Mirror Proof Like. I agree with Deep Mirror Proof Like for this coin. Most of the time New Orleans Mints just don't have that that deepness in the mirrors. This one has some really great deep mirrors and we ended up buying it for sheet which is good and we're gonna offer it like 10% over sheet but just a really nice flashy coin. It almost looks like an 81S which is pretty cool. Then we have another low mintage gold piece. This is an 1873S rated XF40 and surprisingly the premium is pretty low for how many of these were that were minted. It's in an OGH holder and it still has a little bit of luster to the coin also. And I love that, that mint mark just right on the, on the reverse. Then we have arguably my favorite purchase of the whole show. This is the 1875 20 cent piece. Rather lower mintage for a type coin. It's great VF35. It's got some color and luster underneath the details and in the fields. And this coin is a baller coin if I had to say so myself. Definitely my favorite. Then we have this 1838 Small Stars Seated Dime. 
It's great mid state 62. It's got some really nice color on the obverse. Unfortunately, most 1838s have no luster, very lackluster coins. And so that's why this one's a mid state 62. But it does have some charm as opposed to other coins uh, offered for this year in, in small stars. Then we have this 38 S over S Lincoln cent, great mint state 66 red. It's a repunch mint mark. And it also is CAC approved. I like the how red the coin was, no distracting spots. And the luster was phenomenal also. Like I said, not really big into varieties and mint marks and all that stuff, but when the price is right, we try to pick it up, we try to offer it to you guys. Then we have another ancient coin here. Once again, super strong strike, love the design of the coin, and uh, we hope you guys do too. Then we have this 1883 Liberty V Nickel, graded AU58 by PCGS as a repunch date. Nice little type coin that's affordable and uh, still has some great luster as well. Then we have a commemorative coming on in. This is a 1918 Lincoln commemorative half, Great Mint State 64. Has a little bit of like an auburn color to the obverse. It's CAC approved and uh, just one of my probably top five favorite designs for the commemorative series. Then we have a pretty cool coin that I don't get to handle very often. This is the 1819 Cap Bus Quarter, graded VG8 by PCGS. Beautiful original look to the coin, and uh, it's a little bit of an earlier date. These can get pretty expensive, and they normally don't look very original like this coin, and so definitely a unique offering. Then we have this 1897 $2.5 Gold Lib, graded Mint State 60. It's an OGH holder. Luster is booming on the coin. Has a few hits in the field that I'm not really passionate about. Has a little color as well. When you take a look at the eagle on the reverse. Then we have this 1868S. Seated half dime. It's great mid state 64. It's a blast white coin. It's something that's not offered very often. I think this one, you know, in this date and this grade was offered a few years ago in great collections, but that's like the most recent comp that I could find and uh, just a very neat coin overall. Then we have another ancient coin with a strong strike, lovely design. Then we have a pretty cool key date. This is a 1916 Denver. It's graded Fair 2 uh, by PCGS. I bought this coin because it looked like it was just super original. Nice wholesome look to the coin. And, uh, you know, it's probably was not messed with at all. And you can still see the mint mark pretty well down there when it jumps out at you. But buying these at this, at this grade level is pretty great because, you know, you're, you're spending five, six hundred bucks on a grade like that. But sometimes, you know, getting up in those higher grades can cost you thousands of dollars. This is an 1871S seated half dime. Has a little color to the obverse. Nice San Francisco mint. Coin. I wish the luster was a little bit stronger, but that would have probably bumped it up to a three or a four, but that's okay. Then we have another cool coin here. This is an 1892 Barber Dime. It's great AU58 by PCGS. The true views really share the color of the coin. It has some good luster to it as well. It is CAC approved. It's a first year type coin for the Barber series. And uh I don't know. I thought it had some good character to it. Try not to buy first years too often just because sometimes it just don't sell for us. But that one surely has uh, something that separates it from the rest. And here's our last coin of the video, 1877, two and a half gold lib. Another better date. Very tough to find in any grade. XF40. An old soapbox holder. And uh, I think they were a little bit conservative on the XF40 on this coin, but nonetheless, super cool. Thank you guys for taking a look at all of these new purchases. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on the coins that we shared today, the lesson that we talked about today. Make sure to subscribe. Coming out with videos every single week. We want you guys to be a part. Make sure to check out Wednesday's video that's coming out this week. It's going to be a great CAC reveal and uh, we can't wait to see you there.